I'm always paranoid I'm gonna trip just as I'm coming up on the stage. I don't know how you walk these runways without being worried about tripping all the time. We do worry about it sometimes, but yeah, I think you can think about it. You just have to do it. And I think I have enough practice that we see where, you know, steps and things, we have to pay attention, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it never, never, nothing happened to you, never tripped or have anything. You ever, have you ever tripped on the runway? I, did I ever tripped? I don't um, think so. I actually did. Tell when I did that. the um, Versace fashion show, I remember I had this really long dress and it was all chiffon. And, you know, the music gets really loud and you have to have energy, you gotta have attitude. It's Versace, right? It's, you gotta go for it and have an attitude. And I made a step and this chiffon dress went underneath my shoe. And as I stepped, I slipped. So I kind of felt, it was kind of a funny fall because it was like this boom, boom. You know, on my butt and straight up and started walking again. Um, so it happens. It was kind of fun. So, but you got back up. That's the I got most right back up. Thing. So let's start from the very beginning. I think everyone in the audience would love to hear the story of how you started modeling. Like, were you scouted? How were you discovered? So how I was discovered? Um, you know, growing up, I was never your typical model. I was not a girl that felt was beautiful. You know, yes, I kind of have a I had a good personality, so I think that kind of, I, I, I could do things and I had friends, but I definitely wasn't a very confident and confident young girl. I was very different. I had long legs, I had long arms, I wasn't, you know, curvy and developed like all the other girls. I had these big teeth and I didn't really know how to work with it. I didn't know how to use it and move with it. And so I've never wore dresses. I never wore skirts before. I always wore pants. And I would always walk behind friends going to school because people just would always look at me and point at me and kind of whisper about how I looked. Because I do come from a very small town where it's like 50,000 people. So kind of everybody knew each other and I was just different. And so I kind of stood out always. Uh, so when I was young, also another thing that I would do a lot, I would do this. Because I was so tall and I did not want to stand out so much and I did not want the attention that I would like hinge, you know. And then later on I really had to learn to open up and be proud and be tall and confident and, and own who I am and not be afraid to stand out. Which takes a lot of guts, you know, when you're not confident and when you don't feel good and people don't think you're beautiful and kind of look at you all the time, not the nice way. It really takes a lot of guts to stand up straight and be like, you know what, this is who I am. So I think when I really came to modeling and started working with people like you, you know, editors and photographers and people in the industry kind of acknowledge and made me feel good about who I am and how I look. Oh, you have great long legs. Like, we should show them off. Really? Um, you have great smile. You should smile. Really? Um, you know, it might sound very silly, but I think for a girl who is 13, 14, 15 years old, those little things like that really means a lot. And it meant so much for me really having that validation and that recognition of something that maybe I was not so comfortable with and maybe insecure that it's okay, like it's nice, it's different. Um, so it, it was nice having that, I think, uh, discovering myself from an early age in the fashion industry. You know, yes, it can be, the fashion industry can be tough and it can have its not so good size, but um, I think for me at that time was very important and really gave me a lot of confidence. But I kind of, we went really away from how I started, didn't we? <laughs> oh, there was so much to say, so much to say. So going back to how I started, yeah, I was just very different. You know, I didn't really feel beautiful. And the last thing I thought, like, I will ever be a model, that was never in my mind, on my mind, uh, my dream. Um, I definitely would look at magazines and uh, TV and see models on the runway and wow, they're so beautiful. They're so confident, you know. Um, I wanted to be that, like I think any girl who is 13, 14 and really seeing women who feel good about how they look and are confident on the runway or in magazines, we think, 
right? When you get to know a lot of them, of course, we're just human beings. We get insecure, we get shy, we have bad days, you know, we get scared. Like, you know, I still, I, I still get scared even coming, you know, out here. When was the last time you felt nervous or scared or kind of <clears throat> just insecure? Um, even like today, you know, I think it's not like terrifying scared, but I get those butterflies in my stomach. You know, I get like, you don't know what you're going to expect. You know, I don't know who's going to watch, who's here, how is the energy. I'm very sensitive to all those things. So I think if you're an artist and you're very sensitive and you're putting yourself out there, whether it's in front of camera or pictures or runway, you're putting yourself out there. So you never know how you're going to be perceived. How is the energy going to be? Are they looking at you in a good way, bad way? Do they like you? Do they not like you? So I'm very kind of sensitive to that. So I'm always a little excited, nervous, because it's that not knowingness, how somebody's going to be, how's that experience going to be. And that's the beauty of being in the moment, too, because you don't know. You know, life, it's, if you're in the moment, you have to be willing and be open to experience anything, whether it's pain, happiness, beauty, anger, all of it, right? Wait, I have to get this answer out of you. How did you get started in modeling, <laughs> oh God, though? Back to the original so, question. Um, <sighs> So also another funny thing growing up, I really didn't like being in front of camera. I didn't like cameras, I didn't like taking pictures. And when I was 14, a friend of mine wanted to be a photographer. So she asked if she could take a few pictures of me in the room, you know, just like two 13 year olds goofing in the bedroom, you know, with like no makeup. This is back then when we were innocent, there was really no extensions, no self tanning, you know, it was like mascara was makeup. Lip gloss was a lot of makeup. Uh, so she took these few pictures of me and she sent it to an agency in Prague. They called my house without telling me. She sent him and they called my house and uh, they said, we would love to meet you. Are you interested in modeling? And first, I wanted to kill my friend. Second, I was thinking, wow, OK, this is kind of interesting. You know, I should go meet them and see. I really never thought anything you of it. You were 13? I was 14. Wow. So I went to meet with them, and this was back then when it was really old school. They would check my teeth, check my hair, my skin, my nails. And back then, I used to bite my nails really badly. Ew. I was really, yeah, from school, I was, I guess, really nervous or, you know, the pressures of school and grades. So I used to bite my nails. And that was one thing that wasn't good. And they're like, ooh, ooh, no, no, not so nice. And from that day, Is that I when stopped. you quit biting your nails? I stopped, yeah, because of that, I stopped biting my nails, which is good, too. Yeah. Now I don't bite my nails. I have good. nice nails. Um, and so I started to, you know, I did some test shoots, really built my book and kind of built my experience. And then when I was 15, I went to Milan for a week to really kind of practice my English. My parents were big believers, you know, the only way you're going to really be good in language is when you get out there and don't speak your language. And started to see people there, casting directors, designers. And I met Russell Marsh, who was casting Prada and Miu Miu show for a very long time, until like a few years ago. He basically casted all the girls for the runway, for the campaign. And I guess he liked me. And he introduced me to Miss Miu Cha Prada. And Amazing. That's kind of where it started. And um, I did the exclusivity for the show that year. I opened the show. The collection was made on me. Amazing. Um, and I was 15. And that's really the first time the fashion world got to see me on the runway. And of course, everybody was like, who is this girl we've never seen? Uh, you know, can you explain what a casting is and how that process works? So casting is... Um, you know, when you're starting, whatever you do, whether you're an actor or a singer, um, I mean, wannabe stylist or editor, you know, you go on meetings where you go meet people out there so they know of you, they get to know who you are, your personality. I think that's very important nowadays. It's not just how qualified you are and what's on your resume, but who are you as a person? You know, what's your attitude like? What's your personality? Are you willing to work? I feel like a lot of young people nowadays they don't understand like, that they're not willing to work hard. They just kind of want to be out there. They want to be in the first row of fashion shows. They want to be photographed. They want to be famous. But what does it take? You know, there's, wait a minute, let's go back. Like, let's start like interning, getting those coffees, making uh, 
copies of paper, running around, you know, getting things. Like, you really need to be humble and kind of build and start somewhere, you know? And if you're a good and you're professional, you're on time, you're pleasant, you kind of know what you're doing, you'll, you'll move your way up, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, I totally agree. That work ethic, ultimately, no matter what industry you're in, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the last time, the first time you were starstruck, I assume, was Mutua Prada. Or did you, did you know who she was at the time when you were 14 years old or 15 years old? No, I didn't know who she was. Okay, no, no big deal. So I wasn't starstruck, but definitely... Um, you know, she has, uh, Mucha is very quiet, so kind of striking, and you never know what she's thinking, so that can be kind of intimidating, for sure. And I remember when I would do all the looks at the Prada showroom in Milan, I would be there every day for like a week, everything was made on me, everything will be tried on me for, you know, getting everything ready for the show, and nobody will be speaking. It will be literally, everything will be white, white walls, white floors, Nobody talking, no music, no, like everybody's just whispering. And you know, I was 14, 15, I was 15, I was 15 years old. I had like so much energy. I would come in like, hi, ciao, amore, mwah, mwah. how are you? Uh, so I had a lot of energy and I, I, I think, you know, now looking back, they must have been like, oh my God, this girl, who is she? Like, this is way too much energy. I'm but sure I think they also I probably- I think that's why they loved you, because you brought the energy. Yeah, I, I, yeah, because I didn't know, you know, I was so young, I was just so excited, and I didn't know how the politics work, and you should maybe be a little quiet, and... But when was the last time you were starstruck? Because you meet a lot of people in your job, so like, when, when was the last time you were like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm meeting this person? Hmm, 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 hmm. Uh... For me, it was when I met Grumpy Cat recently. I like lost my mind. Like my assistants in the audience, she can attest to the fact that I was like, I literally lost my mind. I started screaming like, grumpy cat. And it's a cat. So I don't, you probably are not as impressed by a cat no, as me. I mean, but. Um, no. If she's really, I don't know, I might be if she's really like interesting and fun. I don't know. No, I mean, grumpy, grumpy cat. Yeah. You like grumpy cat? She's just grumpy. I mean, she's awesomely grumpy. It's the best thing ever. Uh, last time I was starstruck, um, you know, I think every day, you know, I'm, I'm amazed the people I meet every day and the people I work with, you know, from photographers, editors, writers, journalists. Um, you know, I'm fascinating about anybody and everybody. It doesn't have to be somebody like super famous, like Brad, Angelina. Yes, of course, you know, I admire people and I look up to them and I'm amazed how they do things, but I'm samely amazed when I meet just somebody maybe who's nine years old and who's incredible, incredibly witty and smart and interesting and, and full of life and has a great point of view. Um, That's great. So let's talk a bit about social media because I've been staring at the screen with your Twitter handle back there. Talk to me. I think you are one of the models with the biggest social media presence. What do you love about social media? Well, social media, it's a great way to really connect with people on an individual level because you can, um, you know, really have a kind of conversation with somebody in the middle of nowhere. Maybe they will never had a chance to meet you in person or talk to you, but through social media, they can kind of ask you anything and really connect. Um, I actually do have this girl in Germany that I correspond on a regular basis, pretty much on a daily basis. And, and it's been really amazing because she really opened up to me about so many personal things, really intense and in-depth things. And so we're, you know, I'm kind of trying to help her and mentor her and kind of uplift her and help her in life. And she doesn't even speak English, so I think she Google translates everything I write or she writes to me. So sometimes it's kind of hard to understand, but it's been amazing to see the process. And even though it's that just one person, but I can see the impact that I'm having with her and how appreciative she is just of me kind of taking the time to really going back and forth with her and answering her questions and kind of when she's down or when she's having, you know, her, her little issues and kind of uplifting her. And so that's been really, I think, amazing having that power, just having that direct communication with people. Um, but, you know, I also try to keep a balance. I think social media is amazing, but I think it's kind of taking us away from, like, 
being in the moment. So I try to do some of the pictures or post things that I, f I find they're interesting, but at the same time, I, I, I think it's important to put it away and, and, and yeah, live and be in the moment and see people and look at each other. Like now at Ace, I was just looking actually on TV the other day from Fashion Week. You see all the girls getting hair and makeup and everybody is on their phone. Like literally every single person was on their phone. Nobody was looking at each other. Hey, how are you? How is your mom, dad? How is your kid? You know, how are you feeling? Uh, I love your shoe. What did you get? It? You know, now it's like on the SMS, where's your shoe from? You know, nobody's really, even though they were sitting right next to you, uh, it's um, Tabitha Smith. Um, so, you know, everything has its pluses and minuses, I think is, as long as we learn to kind of balance it out and uh, use it in the right way and really kind of have the right voice and be a role model and share good things and positive things for people, for young girls to kind of learn from and grow from. No, I think one of the downsides of social media and the digital world in general is also it's very easy for people to be negative. You know, they don't, they say things to people that they would never say to your face in person because they're hiding behind a screen. How do you deal with any negativity or criticism that you get? Do you get any? I mean, do people criticize your appearance ever? What would you say? What advice would you give for girls out there? For sure, I get negatives, um, messages, comments. Um, there's actually a person, God knows if it's a girl or boy, that on every social media platform and every single day posts horrible things, you know, saying really mean things, insulting things. Uh, so sometimes I look at it, and now I'm kind of aware of that person, so I kind of ignore it. I think more, if you get in too much of a conversation with them, you're kind of feeding them, and they will never stop, and they just will continue doing it. Um, so I kind of, okay, I know that person is there. That's what they do. This is who they are. And I try to kind of ignore it, you know. Um, of course, it can hurt. So I think it's better not to, like, look at it too much and don't take it personally, you know. It's kind of sad on from them. You know, why would they do something like that? Why would they say the things that they're saying, you know, like, don't you have a job? Don't you have something else to do? Like, you're spending way too much time writing how horrible I am and how much you don't like me or my life or God knows what. Um, so it's kind of sad on, you know, on their behalf, you know. Like, why can't they spend that time improving themselves yes. instead or doing oh. something good for other people? I, agree. I don't know. That's a good use of time. So, oh, thank you. I like <laughs> applause. Great. Um, let's talk about something positive, though. Who would you say have been the role models for you? In, who have been role models for you in your career? Or who, can you think of any great advice that anyone's ever given you that you can share with the audience? Um, my parents definitely been my amazing role models. You know, they're still married. They are um, amazing parents. They're very cool, very modern. They always allowed us to be who we wanted to be. And... I wouldn't be here today if they didn't allow me to be who I wanted to be. I mean, I was 15 years old and I kind of embarked on this journey to the fashion world and modeling and kind of trying it out and see where life it will take me. And, you know, I love what I do and I really enjoyed it at that time. So it was amazing for them to kind of trust in me and allow me to explore and experience and, you know, get hurt, be hurt and fall down and be rejected, be disappointed. Um, so I really have to say a big thank you to them to kind of raising me the way they did. And so I have a good head on my shoulder, but also allowing me to go and, you know, let me experience life on my, on my own and on my way. Uh, you know, they've always been there and they've been very supportive, but you know, they gave me that space. They never told me, like, you have to do this and you have to play piano and I want you to study. Um, and I was also very good. I kind of knew what I had to do on my own from an early age. Um, and then people around me, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky. I have an amazing family. My son, Tobin, who is five, and my husband, Archie, who really are my fuel, my, my everything, my inspiration, and they challenge me every day. You know, especially my son, I feel like, Becoming mother, I, um, you become much more spiritual. You really go deep inside yourself and you ask yourself all these questions and, you know, why am I doing what I do? Like, what kind of parent do I want to be? Like, what's really important? You know, how am I communicating with the people around me, my son? And 
the approaches I'm taking with him and things I do or don't do. And uh, so he's been an incredible lesson for me, um, you know, having him and, you know, teaching me every day and challenging me, you know, pushing me uh, not to be afraid and, and uh, to have fun. I think older we become, and you would, I'm sure, kind of uh, know that too, like more successful you become and it's harder to take risks because the risks, are much higher and you know if it's not going to be great and you feel like it will affect you more you know and being when you're a child you you don't there's no limits you don't care you just explore you want to do things you say things that you know that you mean um uh, there's no like this other barrier you know you're just so free and i think that's i'm trying to really you know i'm free but i think i can be much more freer and and more courageous so I'm, I'm really feeding that from my five-year-old. Well, He's yeah. my role model right well, now. Well, you, you know, you experience the world through their eyes, and everything is new and fresh, and it makes you not jaded or not kind of cynical about... You just feel like everything is new and wonderful. Yes. So, okay, five-year-old boy, is he into clothes or fashion? Or does he choose his own clothes in the morning? Because I heard that because I just had a baby a few weeks ago. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Does, uh, does he kind of have an opinion on what he wears? Because obviously his mom is a supermodel, so I don't know if he has an opinion. I mean, I don't look like this every day. Not at home. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's very casual. Um, oh, yeah, he has an opinion, of course, on fashion, uh, very much so. He, uh, he went through a phase where he had to pick his shoes, and he was obsessed with shoes. So he would tell me the shoes he wants, and, Mommy, let's go online. Let's look at them, and this is the one I want. So I will go on the website. Online he shopper, will put okay. the shoes that he wanted. You know, if the friend had the shoe, it light up. Or oh, why don't I have, a li like, lighting up shoes? So we had to buy shoes that lit up. You know, there might be the ugly craziest shoe but he just really wanted it because of course kids want what the other kids have and more colorful more light it has better it is uh, even though it, maybe it's not a great shoe for their feet but right. you know you have to always keep that balance so yeah we might have a shoe that's better for his feet but then we gotta have a crazy shoe um, yeah and he will what's really sweet also about Tobin like if I'm getting ready to go somewhere and he's like wow mommy you look like a princess oh you know, so it's really sweet um, to kind of dress up around him and, and kind of have him notice, you know, like, wow, mommy, your hair is so different. I don't like that hair. Take it off. Aww. You know, the other day I had a wig on. I had this like bleach blonde kind of weird haircut. And he's like, take it off, mommy. This is not nice. This is Aww. not you. Um, yeah, he likes fashion. So it's kind of nice. He gives compliments already from early age. He's a gentleman. That's wonderful. That's so sweet. Now, there's a lot of controversy now because a lot of celebrities have been bringing their children and their babies to fashion shows recently. Have you ever brought Tobin to a fashion show, or would you? Uh, have I brought Tobin to a fashion show? Um, I don't think he's ever... Definitely he's never sat in the first row. No. Um, How do you think he would do in the first row? Would he? You know, I'm not sure. I mean, he's five now, so he's bigger. He'll be probably a little shy. I mean, it's kind of overwhelming, you know, all these people and flashes and photographers. Um, I don't know. I don't know how he will do. Um, I would definitely maybe have him visit, like, backstage and, you know, come see me. Um, but, yeah, not in the first row. I don't know. I don't know what he would do, what he would think, you know? He would end up with his light up shoes walking the runway. Yeah, he might. That'd be cool. That's what, that's what might happen. He'd be like, stand up and be like, oh, I want to walk too. He's quite independent and free spirited. So that's good. Uh, he might be walking with his Crocs around, you know, in a beautiful runway. Um, that is a great quality. <laughs> That'd be a great should, moment, right? I think you should foster that quality. It's great to kind of keep that independent, fierce spirit. So I think we're opening up to questions from the audience now. We have a few minutes. So um, what questions do you have for Carolina? Go for it. <clears throat> oh, no everyone's questions. so shy. There's a question. Hi. Oh, Hi. It's loud. Um, I just wanted to kind of get an idea from you on how you find ways to balance your career and your family and your relationships. I'm very hmm. curious about this, too. Me, too, because you just had a baby <laughs> and your baby's little. We all have to take little. notes. Everyone's going to bring out their notepads um, and take notes. 
how do I do it? You know, I think it helps that I'm an extremely organized person. Um, I think, yeah, when you're jiggling so many things, really being organized really helps. Um, having a great partner, you know, my husband is extremely supportive and um, understands what I do. And it's really nice that he wants me to fulfill my dreams. So he's kind of there for me, whatever he can do for me and for the family so I can be happy, makes him happy. So it's nice that I have a husband who doesn't have a big ego and it's, you know, he's not selfish. Uh, so he's willing to kind of work with me. It definitely, it, it's also a lot of organizing between each other. Like our conversations most of the times are like, okay, what's your schedule? What are you doing this day, that day? Can you be with Tobin? Okay, I have to go away. So it gets kind of, it's not that much fun to d do that in a relationship, you know, being discussing scheduling all the time. But, you know, we all make the effort and we know it's important. Um, uh, what else it's important in balancing? I think when I work, I work and I'm there for 200, you know, 200%. I'm focused on what I do. And when I'm home, I am on 200% as a mom. So I think I really am able to kind of switch the roles. When I'm at work, it's work. And that's what I do. Make sure Tobin is set when I'm not there. He's with daddy or with somebody amazing who helps us, you know, with Tobin. And then when I'm there, I'm fully there. You know, I cook, I wash his hair, we do homework, we build trains, we'll go play soccer. Um, you know, we, I do whatever I need to do, whatever he wants to do. So I'm there as a parent, I'm there as his, as his friend. Um, but it's hard. Of course, sometimes it's very hard. You know, I sometimes, when I put him to bed, I fall asleep sometimes when I'm in bed, when I'm reading his bedtime story because I'm so tired. And I'm like, okay, come on, let's go to bed already. <laughs> He's like, no, one more book, mommy, one more book. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but it's amazing. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. And, um, and again, you know, makes you stronger, makes you... Uh, figure out life in a different way and you just, you know, you just do it. You just do it. You know, you can't think about it. You just have to make sure you're doing your best. You're trying your best. Um, you, you know, I like to always kind of educate myself about everything. How can I be the best parent, mom, friend, partner that I can be? And so, you know, sometimes I'm like, you know, I need help. I don't know how to do this. So, well, you know, the great thing with technology, now you can go on social media, let's say you can ask somebody or you can go look at great articles and really educate yourself on people who are sharing things out there and, you know, kind of take away f from what they're saying and what they've learned and kind of apply and try it out. Great. Hello. Uh, so obviously we are mid fashion week and I'm just curious to hear from both of you any trends that you're seeing that you're really excited about um, Just in general Well, Eva, I think this is more a question for you because you go to every single show So you really see what's out there. I'm not at every single show oh Gosh. Uh, well, I came from Michael Kors this morning, which is always an amazing show. It's I mean, he's the king of American sportswear, I think uh, so it's fall winter, which is really confusing because basically we're still in fall winter now and we're basically like six months ahead. So a lot of delicious knits, great men's flat shoes for women. So if that makes sense. So like loafers, Oxfords, no heels, which is good. Really That's comfortable, nice. good for the city. I like a good flat. Yeah, flats are great. And then kind of like that sporty kind of feeling is still very much present. So a lot of kind of athletic details, racing stripes and pants, um, that kind of thing. So it's all over the place, really. I think what we've been seeing in fashion for the last few seasons is that it's about being individual and it's about having your own personal style. It used to be, I think, when I was starting in the industry and probably for you as well, remember when you felt like you had to dress a certain way or you had to have a certain item? Mm -hmm. I think nowadays fashion is much more about finding what you like and then celebrating that. And I think also what's great now with um, like fashion, there's so many options out there. You know, you can really do lower end. You know, you don't have to buy just really high-end fashion designer clothes, but you can find these little like brands and they're much more accessible, cheaper, that you can kind of mix in, but still look nice and feel like you're wearing something that is on trend, uh, but it's not like something like, well, I cannot have it. You know, I feel like fashion has become much more accessible and people really can make their fashion and their trends in a very affordable way. Totally, I think that the, the best, I think it's actually more impressive when I meet someone who is mixing J. Crew and Zara, and maybe she has something from Marc Jacobs on too, but she's mixed it all together. 
And I think that when you see people sometimes and they're wearing a head to toe runway look, I actually think that's much less creative mm -hmm. because they're just taking an entire look off the runway. Whereas when they mix it and they make it their own and maybe they're wearing it with vintage Levi's and they're wearing a vintage pair of shoes or a pair of shoes from Zara, I think that's so much better. I agree. More questions. So shy. It's a shy group. There might be one back here. Hi. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Thanks Hello. for coming. Um, so you guys, both of you have done some really cool out of this world sorts of things. And I'm just wondering what has been one of the highlights or like the coolest, like blown you away moment. Ah, oh, blew me away moment. I think definitely becoming uh, Marilyn Manson for a Vogue photo shoot. Oh, yeah. That was that. definitely um, a great experience. I, I basically, yeah, I was transformed into Marilyn Manson. So I had, I was, you know, my whole body was covered in white, uh, white makeup. I had the lenses like he does. I mean, it was full on the hair, the outfit, the expression. I was actually walking around the studio when we were doing those pictures and I saw people I knew. I was like, hi, hi. Like, you know, not so hi, but like, hi, hi. And they were like, ooh, why, why is he saying hi to me? They really believed I was Marilyn Manson. Um, that was definitely awesome. I like moments like this. You know, I love those kind of things about my work. I get to really, you know, explore and be somebody else. And, and, and I think that's what really makes what I do so exciting. You really, you never know when you come to work what you're going to be and who you're going to be. Uh, so I really appreciate moments like that when it's something so different to who you are and how you look. I love that. I have no idea how to answer that question because I feel like every day I get to do something weird and unexpected, whether, like I said, meeting Grumpy Cat, yeah. doing this interview with you, uh, photo bombing Kevin Hart on the set of Good Morning America once. You know, it's like every day is different, so I feel like it really is such a privilege. And I think living in New York City, which we all do and we're all sitting in this audience, like that is the greatest adventure, I think, of all, like no matter what you do. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Oh, ooh, two, finally. People like how like right when we have two minutes left, it's like me, me, me. But let's, let, we can do them both well, very, we need to break the eyes, very you know, efficiently. Like... We'll, we'll answer them efficiently. Hi, Carolina. Hi. Um, is there anything that you do in the moments right before you walk out on a runway? Uh, so what I try to do, of course, as I said before, you know, even though I've been doing for 15 years, I still get nervous. I get those butterflies. Um, so what I do before I go on the runway, I really, okay, kind of come into myself, take a deep breath, <sighs> shake my face, be like, you know, do something so silly and crazy. So I get out of my head and kind of just think of good, positive things and just say to myself, so, you know, have a good time, like enjoy this. And that's what I do. Then I walk and, you know, kind of feel how is my hair, makeup, what I'm wearing, feel the music, feel the audience, and just, and just kind of have a good time. Hi, Carolina. I'm Hi. Maria. Um, so when you're on set, I feel like the most chemistry for you to get that character going through is really you and the photographer and you and the stylist. Um, who has been your favorite photographer and stylist to work with and why? So when I work nowadays, yes, you have people who are really good um, photographers and they're really good directors. But also nowadays we have a lot of photographers who are amazing photographers. Maybe they're better in lighting and compositions, but they are not really good with people. They don't really know how to communicate with their artist. Um, they don't really know. Uh, so you then have to make sure you, you, you bring a lot of things and you can kind of like, okay, I understand what inspiration is what the hair and makeup is like, what are the clothes. So doing it already for a long time, I can kind of a, a right away tell what's the direction, what the mood is gonna be like, what I think will be right. So I, I always bring a lot of kind of my own ideas. And, uh, and of course, I'm also the person who's telling the story. I'm the person who is in front of camera. And I always make sure that when I do pictures that it's not like you know, I, I really put a good music on that really inspires me in the way I want to feel. Or, um, 
Yeah, and I kind of draw from myself. I'm kind of like a silent actor. I kind of really break it down. I'm like, okay, what's the music like? Who am I in these clothes? What am I want to say? What is the message? Um, photographers, I mean, we have so many incredible photographers, like Peter Lindbergh, who is really unique and special, the way he photographs women. You know, it's very, he's, he's really like the director. He's really just kind of, they're capturing every moment in a very natural way. You know, he's not like, okay, now. He's kind of taking pictures as he's talking to you and you sit down and he's kind of following you. And then you have photographers like Steven Meisel, who is just incredible man who understands compositions, who understands the face, who understands hair and makeup and fashion. And he really knows how to create an incredible picture and how to work with the person he's photographing, okay, what's this person's best angle? Who do they look like? You know, he can kind of read what, it, what are her maybe insecurities? How do I pull this incredible, maybe uh, confident person, and even though maybe she's super shy? Um, again, that's what's really exciting when I work with these different people and different personalities, whether they're stylists editors, hair and makeup people, photographers. It's really, you know, you have to also be really good with personalities, like knowing when to zig and zag, knowing when to, you can be big and loud and entertaining, and when to like maybe turn it down and let everybody else maybe have the ego or be, have the attention. Um, yeah. So you mentioned, and so we'll just end on this note. So you mentioned knowing when to be posing in a big and loud way, and then quiet poses. So can you show us a quiet pose? Okay. Like how would you pose, quiet that's pose. A, what's a quiet, elegant quiet, pose? Quiet. That I mean, deserves it's just kind of more intense, I'm being more, yeah. I mean, I think I'm, that deserves I don't know, a round of being, applause. I'm just right being there. more emotional, you know, yeah. I'm, look I at feel, my eyes. I feel haunted just looking at you. I feel a tear coming to my, and now show us a big, loud pose. I hope the cameras are getting this right now. You are getting a free oh, photo like, shoot I mean, with Carolina Kirkova. It depends, Kirkova, you know, it depends right? who I am, what I'm doing. But, I mean, you know, when you're doing pictures, I mean, this was really two big extremes, so you can kind of tell the difference. But I feel like better is being subtle, you know. It's really sometimes it's about the eye. It's the difference, like, you know, I'm doing a little sparkly in my eye. I'm just kind sparkle. of, like, sad it. and... You know, who are you? Where are you? Really, when I work, it, the lens for me is a person, you know, and I always try to think, well, who is that person I'm talking to? You know, is she a nine-year-old girl? Is she a mom at home? Is she a teacher? Is it, you know, that boy I wanted to date when I was at school and he didn't like me? So I always kind of try to do that for myself. Like, so really. what, is that, what is that pose? That, if you were posing for that boy... Which one? Which one? The boy in school who didn't like you, how would you pose? Well, I also need, like, the right clothes. I need the music. You know, like, now I'm in my little button-down shirts and, you know, my hair's a certain way. So that kind of, it's... Mm -hmm. You know, you really need everything to be uh, together. Okay, um, the guy I really wanted... Um, so imagine you're in a different outfit, maybe Victoria's Secret, I don't know. That's like no clothes, <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, you know, I'm retired from that. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, right. I'm a mommy now, okay? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it could be something, it could be nothing, right? It could be something like I'm just wearing a sheet and I have nothing on and... You know, you kind of, the ice will have All more right, of like a fire. It's getting hot in here, so let's, I think, uh, before and we keep it PG. the will come in the face. Maybe you're biting your nails. On that note, guys. <laughs> you know, could be even a smile. Could be a smile. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Carolina. <laughs> you did an amazing job. A huge round of applause for Carolina. Eva, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for being oh here. Gosh, I know you're busy. I know me. it's I Fashion so Week. Fun. It's shows, and you have an eight-month-old baby. I really or appreciate eight it. Eight weeks old. Eight weeks. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Eight months. Why so am I'm I going home after this? To that's see incredible. My baby. You look so fresh, and you're here, and it's you're running 18 around. Eighteen pounds of makeup. That's that's that that does it. No, and no, do no. It. It's not. It's your attitude, so. and that's also another thing. It's it's your attitude. You know, attitude. Thank it's you. huge. Oh my God. I'm gonna start crying. The hormones. Don't cry. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys. Thank you. 